Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mikko Kotila. Um, Mikko is not Asian either, as you can, can probably see. Um, he doesn't run a creative agency, um, but he addresses a problem which I think all of us in communications have felt since we kind of began working. You put people in a room and ask them questions about what they might do if they saw this advertisement and then went to this shop. It all gets a bit hypothetical. And we've all sought for a long time to try and find a company that would help us to understand what people were actually saying to themselves without sitting in their living room for days on end. Thanks a lot for coming and thanks a lot for uh, having, having us here, Julian. And uh, as Julian mentioned, actually a little bit falsely, I, I didn't start the first, uh, I started one of the first in Finland. It was actually my co-founder uh, who is there in the picture next, next to me. Uh, and he, he started the first digital agency in Finland. And yeah, I do look like a college crab, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but what I really want to do, I want to give you a quick intro about who we are. And, and as Julian said, what we do is we use social media conversations for serious research. And uh, the title here really tells everything about us. And, and I want to bring you through very quickly in a few minutes through what that brains, beauty, and balls really means. And uh, I'm going to do that through introducing a few of the people that I work with. And uh, first person is Amina, and, and here Amina represents uh, <coughs> the, the hard work, uh, the, the balls, the bravery. And uh, even though she's our lead analyst for China, she actually herself manually codes all the conversations in the projects that she's involved with. And in any other research agency, you wouldn't find something like that happening. It's always siloed. And the next person I want to introduce is Elena. Uh, Elena is uh, our one of our statisticians, and she represents here uh, science. And, and uh, uh, what she did for her MBA thesis, she uh, predicted that the Singapore stock market hourly close price is at 99.5% accuracy. So I think that's pretty good. And uh, then finally, uh, Paven. Uh, and uh, Paven won her first uh, uh, advertising award when I think she was 17. Uh, so I didn't just show these pictures here because they are ridiculously hot, but because they really do represent those three things. So what we're all about is science, uh, about doing new things boldly and, and, and working hard, and about creativity and elegance. And, uh, just to give an example of, of work that we've done, this is not actually done using social media, this is done using Google survey. And uh, what we did, we asked people uh, how credible TV commercials are. And, and we found that 35% said that uh, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, never influenced by TV commercials. But when we asked the same question about Facebook comments, actually 65% of the people said that they are never influenced by, uh, uh, by Facebook comments. And, and these were actually active Facebook users. So advertising is definitely not dying. Actually, quite the opposite. There is a really new beginning for advertising, and especially the creatives, because now we're in the advent of one-to-one -one marketing. So already we have the RTV coming in online display, and soon with Smart TV, we can actually target individuals uh, in their home and, and uh, that's really calling for a, a completely new kind of creativity with the marketing that we do. But there is also a problem coming from this. A few weeks ago uh, in iMedia in, in uh, Phuket, uh, Matthew Godfrey from YNR was talking about uh, data that they have, how uh, the consumers now, the consumers who are above 50 are uh, a lot more similar like the consumers who are below 20 than it was 20 or 30 years ago when they were completely different. And he was also talking about how we've come from uh, you know, replacing uh, uh, durables in 30 uh, months to 18 months. But what he didn't mention is that actually Apple is pushing for 12 months. And uh, why this is a problem is, is because really as an industry, we are focusing just on fueling that type of progress. But we have great power. We can convince clients, we can convince consumers. Very few people have that kind of power. So that's what I really call a superhuman power. We're the experts of behavior change. So how about if we would put 10% of our time, just 10% to actually helping others? Thank you.